Welcome to the Grace of Eugene podcast. We exist to help every person in our sphere of influence to encounter Christ, experience biblical community, and extend God's kingdom. You can learn more about us at gracecityeugene.com. Here's the podcast. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Extended Cut, a weekly podcast from Grace City Eugene that dives a little bit deeper into the themes and scriptures from our Sunday sermons. Uh, with me today, sermon, whose sermon we are unpacking, is uh, Pastor Chris. Hello, I'm Sermon. <laughs> hello, Sermon. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's good and, to be here uh, with you. Yeah, great to have you. Happy opening week to all you MLB fans out there, probably all three of us in the church. I don't even know if there's three of us. Yeah, prob- probably one and a half. One and a half? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'll take it. I'll celebrate. I'll celebrate in September when yeah. the real sport comes around. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe if the Giants were any good, you would celebrate. But <laughs> anyways, uh, before we jump into the podcast today, we want to talk about what's upcoming at Grace City, Eugene. Let's go. Uh, first thing that we want to talk about, most relevant, upcoming, is uh, Easter weekend. That is just a week and a half away it's at this just point. around the corner, Casey. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it is right around the corner. And we've got three days planned that we think are really going to bless you. Uh, it will begin on Friday, April 7th. We've got our uh, Good Friday service. We have this program, this um show that we've done the last couple of years, show that feels wrong, but it feels right at the same time, because it kind of is, called Vignettes, which is kind of a combination of scripture reading, storytelling, and worship songs that are all intended to help you reflect um, and really feel the weight of what Jesus willingly took on for our sins. And um, so you can join us for that service on Friday, April 7th at 7 p.m. That's going to be at our building uh, 2533 Crescent Ave. Then Saturday morning, we've got not only an Easter egg hunt for our families, uh, but we're celebrating our seventh birthday as a church. Seven years. Seven years. That's special. It is. That's that's it's, awesome. It's a good number. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and so uh, that's going to be at 1030 a.m. at Eugene Christian School. So we're going to kick off the day. We'll start with the Easter egg hunt for the families, for the kids. And then after that, we'll kind of roll into birthday mode. And we're going to have a meal provided. We're going to have kind of the main dish. And we're encouraging or really inviting you, um, please bring a side to share uh, so that we can kind of have a full meal and uh, really celebrate with one another. We rented Eugene Christian School so that we could be inside if necessary. But uh, if it's nice outside, maybe we'll sneak outside and play on the playground too. And That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hit that slide up. Yes. The slide. I'm more of a swing guy myself. Uh, too old. I get dizzy. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, so that'll be on April 8th at 1030 a.m. Please join us for that. And then the grand finale, April 9th at 1030 a.m. We've got our Easter Sunday service. Um, kind of the the biggest, probably most important Sunday of the year, yeah. um, because you know, I, as I reflected in our e weekly this week, Paul says that if uh, in in First Corinthians fifteen that if Christ is not risen, um, then we're still in our sins, and so it is big big deal big that deal. Yeah. that Jesus has risen from the grave, and it's worth getting together and celebrating this good news. If you show up this Sunday, April 2nd, we're going to have some invite cards for you to hand out to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to your friends, to people in your spheres of influence, as we often talk about. And uh, we really encourage you to be there so you can get those cards. We want to pack out the place, not just to pack it out, but because Jesus is worthy of that big of a celebration. Yeah. He's worthy of us really putting it all on the line to invite our neighbors and our friends and our coworkers and our family members. And so uh, let's pack the house on Easter, but it's going to be an amazing weekend from top to bottom. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited about it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Um, On top of that, it is time slash last week of time 
to register for the women's retreat, which is the 21st through 23rd of April. You can go to our church website and find links to that. Also, um, you've been likely been getting emails with information about that. Unless you're newer to our church, then someone will be getting in touch with you on that um, over this next week. But please, it's time to register. There's um, an opportunity to even um, indicate how you may like to serve in that weekend if there's some things that you could help with. Um, we also um, have scholarships and stuff available. And on that, if you want to give a little extra over what you pay to help contribute to scholarships, that opportunity is also available. So if you have any questions, email Bree at gracecityeugene.com. She can help you out with all that. But we're really excited for uh, what God's going to do in this weekend as he deepens um, the ladies' relationships with each other and with him. And really excited for what they're going to bring back as far as energy and relationships and some cohesion in into our community. So if you are a lady of grace city, please make it a priority to take part in that weekend. I can't uh, stress that enough. It's a, it's just an awesome opportunity and you won't want to miss out. And so that's what we got coming up at Grace City. There you go. Upcoming at Grace City, Eugene, but it was close. I said coming up. I yeah. was wrapping it up the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Fair. Book that's fair. It's a good like alternative tagline for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You need you need your like primary branding. It's kind of like your special branding. uniforms, alternative uniforms. So, Speaking my language. <laughs> Speaking of language, let's talk about your sermon from <laughs> <Did> I... <laughs> uh, this week. We were in what week four? Week four. Week four. four second to last week. Four, as second I've made to last clear. week of our. Abs- obstructions you're doing great <laughs> obstructions sermon series which has been considering the hurdles and hiccups that get in the way of us living out the life that jesus has called us to as his disciple disciples and followers speaking of language <laughs> this is tough uh, <laughs> we're recording this first language we're recording this way too late in the day compared to <laughs> usual i'm a morning that's guy, true this is not like your, evening. yeah this is late for you that's okay i'm gonna pass it over to you here shortly so uh Go check out Pastor Chris's sermon if you've not listened to it yet. It is titled, The Fear of Being Unprepared. You can listen to it on whatever platform you're currently listening or viewing this on. Uh, You'll probably be able to find it in the description or show notes. So please do that. Uh, Let's kick off this time with a little bit of a recap of your sermon. Yeah. Fear of Being Unprepared. And uh, we start off just kind of highlighting the fact that We all have something that we believe either disqualifies preemptively or um, gets in the way of us obeying God and and a a whole spectrum of different things he may be calling us to do, Um, particularly in the life of a disciple of Jesus. There's things about conversations you're called to have, ways you're called to live, ways you're called to steward different aspects of your life that um, we are probably our worst enemies in our head at either trying to figure out how to do it perfect the first time and we never do anything, Mm -hmm. or um, just writing ourselves off because of our past. Because no one knows all the deep, dark things that could disqualify us like ourselves. And so in that, we looked at the story of Moses being called to uh, lead the Israelites, the Hebrew people, out of enslavement and oppression in Egypt. And through looking at the scripture, we realized that um, we need to recognize our fear was the first point. We need to recognize it is what it is. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't try to like throw it under the rug and act like it's not there. Don't recognize it. Call it out. Um, and then we talked about needing to acknowledge who our source is, um, that God is the source of of all of the skills and abilities and, and calling for that matter that we do have. And then what I might say is even most importantly is we just need to take a step forward. Mm. Like it, it's really hard to grow um, in your faith, your skills, and your obedience if you just stay put. Um, God does so much through each step of obedience along the way. And um, we saw that as Moses was you know, making excuses to God. And then God's like, who even gave you the ability to speak? Who even mm-hmm. gave, men, gave men their voices and, and all of this? He says, but go anyway. And um, so I think it was just a, 
a good way to look at someone who felt they were miserably, miserably unprepared. Um, and Moses was dealing with a disability on top of it, right? And so what is our impediment or what is our thing that we believe gets in the way? Mm-hmm. Can we recognize the truth that God gives us skills and abilities and he wouldn't call us to do something he wasn't going to provide for, sure. that his Holy Spirit empowers us and equips us for ongoing and special moments, right? Like sometimes he may gift you or give you what you need for this moment to obey. Sometimes it's a lifelong calling and gifting um, that the, the Spirit gives us for. And then like whatever it is, ask God, what? What's your next step? And faithfully walk that out. Don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Like, be faithful to saying yes, whatever that, however small that step may feel. Um, faithfulness is like a series of yeses, mm. one after another. Um, and so, asking God to be the Lord of our yeses mm. and to provide for us in the midst of those. And That's we great. ended with Philippians four thirteen. You know, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And that as much as that verse is very visible and so many people know it, um, it's, it's because it's earned it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's, it's profound. And, um, and so that's kind of how we ended it. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Well, let's run through kind of our usual gambit of questions here. Uh, what... You sound thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I am thrilled. Glad to be here. Um, oh. What was kind of most difficult for you in putting together this sermon this hmm. week? Getting right into it. Um, I think there's there's a few different angles you could come at something like this from. And so just navigating like... What angle, what what scripture, how are we going to talk about being unprepared? Because there's plenty of things in the Bible where it's just directive, like you do this. And we don't want to make it some performance like you do this because you're supposed to, because the Bible tells me so. Sure. But recognizing the humanity uh, and, and reality of this obstruction of our faith, of feeling unprepared. Um, but then leading folks to recognize that like, if God's called me to do it, he, and I may not feel prepared right now, but he's going to work in me. And it's in those very areas where I'm weak that he's going to reveal himself. Yeah. And so not I, navigating it not being a, because the Bible tells me so sermons, you know, or, or message. And let's, let's connect with the humanity and reality of what we're dealing with. And then have a little hope and a few steps that we can take um, to go forward in that. So I think there's... You know, and I, I don't recall all of them right now, but I probably went through like three or four different um, approaches, um, not on paper, but, but mentally, like, ah, you could come at it this way, you could come at it this way. And having grown up in a very, like, religious type of rule-based, performance-based paradigm of faith, um, and there's plenty of case and plenty of sermons and plenty of books out there to tell you why you should just do be faithful and do something. Right. Um, I did not want to. I felt like that was the e- easy way, mm. so to speak. And when I look out um, from the stage and I'm preaching to people that I dearly love, and I know that dearly love Jesus and want to do their best to follow Him, um, it was. I really wanted to get in the shoes of. Is this as more of a one-on-one discipleship conversation turned into a sermon? Then let me tell beat you over the face of why sure. you should be doing better because sure. that does nobody any good. Mm-hmm. And so um, that was, I, and it wasn't like hard. It was just where a lot of the contextualization work went in and preparing like, what is the tone sure. of this? So No, and I, I think I appreciate that approach a lot and just the recognition that like we all do de- deal with fear on some level in our lives. Like, we all have things that make us uncomfortable, that make us uh, feel like we've got to be like really prepared or, or really strengthened in a moment in order to be able to step into and participate in. And um, it's just such a relevant thing that each and every one of us faces and that deserves a little bit of uh, compassion mm-hmm. to to approach and to call out in somebody not just necessarily, you know, hey, do better kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought that was really great in this sermon. Yeah, I think um, throughout the course of my life of following Jesus, um, a good share of my literal nightmares and my nightmares while I'm awake, you know, like 
have to do with being unprepared, mm. feeling um, like I am insufficient to do something that I believe I'm called to do. Um, I have lived in seasons where the fear of um, being unprepared is the motivator to be overprepared, prepared where I overfunction because of fear, which in turn like really fills a lot of space that God might want to do things and tries to present like you have it together. And so for me, it was a really personal message sure. too. Um, and I was sharing this with Bree today. Some of my like most terrifying nightmares are where like I pop into this scene as I'm sleeping and I'm on a stage with a bunch of people looking at me, which we already know is a dream because that's, you know, not our reality. And, like, I don't know why I'm there, what they're expecting, what I'm supposed to talk about, and I have nothing. I'm just standing there. Yeah. And so, like, that is that's a being unprepared, right? Not knowing what is expected. And um, so that's, like, one – welcome to my world. That's, like, one of my recurring, sure. you know, things. And so um, I think that that also – um, contributed to maybe some of the extra contextualization that happened because that's very a very personal obstruction uh, for me. Yeah. So. No, that's great. Um, on the other hand, what was really great or inspiring joy uh, as you put together this sermon for you? Yeah, I think maybe not in putting it together um, where the greatest joy came, but in conversations afterwards where people were like encouraged or felt like it took something that seemed ominous and made it approachable. It's like, um, it took the whole, like, I got to need an elephant. I just got to take it one bite at a time. Sure. Right. To be super cheesy. Um, but that's, that's my goal is to make faithfulness and obedience approachable and attainable. Yeah. And if you just look at the big picture of the example of Jesus, it's like, I can never do that. I even try. Yeah. Um, but if we can just break it down and like, man, imagine if you just make incremental steps every day, every other, every third day, even, you know, like uh, imagine what can happen in the sure. course of a year or yeah. a decade. And, um, the last decade of my life has been that just incremental mm-hmm. intentional steps. And, um, so that's, that's one of the encouraging parts. Cause I'm not up there just to try to fill time or make sure that I have something cool to say so that people are, we fill the hour and a half or whatever of church. Like my goal is that people will leave being able to know what their next step and becoming closer to mm-hmm. and more like Jesus is. And so any week that that happens, um, it's a solid base hit. And yeah. We're, we're excited for that. So oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, um, what didn't fit in this week's sermon? Were there other things as you were studying or, or working through, uh, maybe this Moses narrative or just other points or kind of themes or thoughts that you thought, oh man, this would be really great to, to touch on too, but just didn't didn't fit? Yeah, I think there was there's a lot of things, um, and I actually like <laughs> this is where you and I probably differ a lot. Like I came into this sermon with like um a few different tools like I didn't have it all scripted out like I was like oh here's a couple ways this could go and like I had the beginning built and then it was like well here's the points but we'll kind of see how God's leading through some of this so like I had a a bucket of some things and um so even in like conversation points or whatever you'd you'd call it there was there was stuff that um there, there's just a lot that could have went into it. There's a lot you could say about like fear and unpreparedness and how false humility is an example of that and how anxiety ties into all this and what that does in us and in our relationships. And I think um, I could have probably went into a whole sub message about how just that first point of fear impacts our relationships counter to what we're actually wanting them to sure. right and so there was a lot of that stuff that I was like ah we'll see I don't know and I mean we trimmed it out I preached plenty plenty long anyway but also like you could go the route of um like there's unprepared and then there's unqualified yeah. and um there's plenty of characters in the bible where is that because they feel unprepared or is that because they feel unqualified? And they kind of are enmeshed in a lot sure. of ways because the feeling unqualified really manifests as like, I, I can't, I'm not ready to, right? right? And so, um, you know, when Jesus is saying to Peter, like, feed my sheep, like, will you feed my sheep? We feel like, 
he felt unqualified, but he also was very unprepared for what Jesus was about to like bring him, lead him into. And so there's some of those things that like, man, that could have been a fascinating thing to, to talk about, but it didn't quite like fall under what I believe the kind of prophetic um, theme of this message was. And so uh, a lot of more around the outskirts type of stuff that sure. didn't necessarily fit, but it's like, oh, this could really go there and be interesting. Yeah. And, um, you know, so the denials and the rebukes and, um, you know, why was Jesus's family like adverse to what God was doing in him? Like, is that an, like what was happening there compared to what we were talking about? There's just a lot of things that you could make a little jump and, yeah. and bring them in. And so, um, not necessarily the same vein that we usually go in in response to that question, but um, there is common threads of people feeling unqualified, disqualified, unprepared, um, fearful, anxious, whatever yeah. else. And I think there's something we can learn from each of those. And oftentimes those things can either be brushed over because they're not the heroic moments or um, we can just avoid them because they're uncomfortable. Sure. And I think that's where we actually get into the humanity of the scripture and can place ourselves in these yeah. things and, and learn more deeply. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's, uh, again, this is just one of those topics. This could be a, a whole sermon series. You could do a whole thing on fear yeah. and unpack five, six different ways that it plays out in different narratives in the Bible and different yeah. ways in our lives today. And well, most churches did in 2020. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yikes. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Um, well, are there any other, you know, kind of just encouragements or reminders or things that you just really want to lead our community into when it comes to, you know, trusting in God to be our strength and to be the one who, um, you know, qualifies and prepares us for these moments? Yeah. I, as I process, process through that question or that thought beforehand, I felt like, to encourage myself and therefore us that um, to be more motivated by where somebody else is headed, their eternity, their relationship, or n like no, no relationship with God over our comfort. Mm -hmm. And so um, like what makes you more uncomfortable? Having an awkward conversation or that by not having it, that person may not have the chance to respond to Jesus. And I, 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 I struggle to say that sometimes because sure. it can be received as like manipulative. But th those are the conversations we need to have with ourselves in the context of discipleship. Like, oh, that makes me uncomfortable. And I try to remind myself, it makes me really uncomfortable knowing that I could be the one that Jesus wants to give them an opportunity to respond through. And I'm saying no because it's awkward. Like, yeah. right now, that may be okay, but I'm going to have to talk to the somebody about that someday and so what really is discomfort what really like where are our priorities in that and mm. i'm f very imperfect at that but i try to remind myself like this person's eternity is at stake their soul their family like that's a bigger deal than me feeling silly or like i had some unwanted uh, conversation that i started yeah. because all it takes is just one to respond and it's worth hundreds of really awkward or even where people might make funny or whatever. Like, yeah. um, and so what, what's going to be our standard? Yeah. And I think, um, one of the keys to that is having just like a ongoing lifestyle of intentionality and that kind of boldness and trust in God. You know, I, I think about, um, my daily life and rhythms it, it is difficult to sometimes work myself up into responding to a particular moment where it's like, oh, I should invite them to that, or I should ask them about that, or really push into this. And uh, But then I think about like when we went on the 10 days trip to Austin last week, after five, six days of missional outreach, hey, you could have told me to go talk to anyone on the street. And I would have just done it because yeah. it's like I've been doing this all week. That this muscle is, is exercise. It's in my DNA. Like this is just what we do. And I found myself doing that. Like just pulling aside different people at Campbell Elementary School that it was like, I don't even know if you know why we're here and that we're yeah. part of the church and things. But like 
how can I pray for you right now? And yeah. what what's going on in your life? And um, you gotta you gotta be constantly flexing those muscles in order to you know continue being growing in your comfort and trust in God because as you do that you'll experience his faithfulness in it and then you would be like oh yeah no this isn't just all on me uh, to to do this but when I'm faithful to take these steps of obedience like he comes alongside and he provides what I need and like and I'm not trying to tell you how you felt in those moments from, from an observation standpoint in that week, as you were doing that, which would normally be draining and you'd want to go off and just get a bunch of you time, like something came alive in those moments because it was an obedience, faithfulness thing and God was providing and you were in like a intensified missional posture. But like you didn't get back to the room at night and be like, I can't talk to anybody. Right. Like there was something was ignited in that. And so it's not even just a provision for the conversation. Yeah. It's a provision for, you know, the accessibility we talked about early in the sermon series. You're like all of these other things that we think we need to per- set boundaries to God, obedience to God, because I don't, I just don't have the relational bandwidth yeah, yeah. for that. And it's like, who gave you relationships in the first place is how I, yeah. ex- you know, with through the Moses conversation with us and that. And so, yeah. um, I just, that was a really cool thing to see there, you yeah. know, and, Melissa like tends to be more introverted. Goodness gracious, that girl came alive. She was the all star of yes. the trip. Literally, so, everyone was like, "I want to go evangelizing with Melissa." Yes, it was yep. epic. And so, um, I just think that's something worth no- acknowledging in that yeah. too, and testifying to God not just giving you words in a conversation, but giving you energy, bandwidth, yeah. excitement, and joy yeah. as you. Amen. Him, yeah, so. it's like if God calls you to it, He's gonna get you through it. Ooh, and, come on, uh, now. it's not just gonna be. Uh, there, there's gonna be moments where it's strenuous and you're tired, and you show up at the end of the day and you're feeling it. But I think you're right. More often than not, I'm like, wow, this is far more life giving than I ever could have anticipated. Yeah. It's like I think back to when I used to work in Corvallis and we'd host the ENC West Coast. Um, conferences yeah. is like this is my busiest week of the year but I somehow left at the end of it being like I do it all again in a heartbeat mm-hmm. kind of thing and it's it's kind of that same thing when you're doing what God's called you to there's there's going to be a, a blessing and a joy in it that yeah. you can't always describe yeah. that's good that's good well thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the extended cup pray that it blesses you hope that you have a great week please uh you know if if you need reminders go back to the very beginning of this podcast but all the upcoming things that we've got going on you can always tune in on our website uh on our social media accounts you can find us at grace of eugene on instagram facebook and youtube Uh, that's where we're most active and that's where you can keep up with all that's going on around here but thanks for listening we'll see you next time see ya